Well, recently we've done a video on fitting the timing gears on our uh, Massey Ferguson 65 with an AD4203 Perkins engine in it. And I showed checking all your timing marks, which you can still see there, <coughs> I mean, and fitting the injection pump. Now, we haven't done anything to that until I've got the pistons in. So I've now got the pistons in, and there's a way of checking your injection pump timing that, look, I, I believe it's the best possible way of doing it. Um, you can, you do have a mark on the flywheel where you can set the timing, but um, according to the Perkins manual here, it shows you where you can um, measure from the top of your piston on number one cylinder and check that in our case, letter B lines up with the circlip properly on the injection pump. Now, in this series previous, I've showed you how to check if that mark, or if the, if the flat end of the circlip on your injection pump is timed right, you know, if it's in the right place by either hooking it to an injector tester and turning it until you feel that point of injection, or it, it looked like even putting air up the back worked. So, um, so we're pretty confident after doing that, that the pump is timed to the circlip mark correctly. So we've checked that. Now, with this way of checking, the, the, the gist of it is, is to work out exactly the, the number of degrees before top dead center that the injector will fire. And Perkins in their workshop manual here, um, they've given us a list of the different engines and, and how far down the piston would be expected to be, to be a certain degree, as in um, 24 degrees before top dead center or 26 degrees before top dead center. So <clears throat> now we have the pistons in and I've left the front timing cover off and that's so we can just see what's going on. And I'll read to you out of the manual. Um, hang on, I better get me bloody eyeballs in. Now, where are we? So the A4203, um, well, we'll start off with the A4192. The A4192 with an AF50 pump on it, um, the static timing on that is 20 degrees before top dead center. So they want the piston to fire at 20, or the, the piston to fire, the injector to squirt so it can fire at 20 degrees before. And they're saying, if you bring this piston right up to top dead center, find out where top dead center is, which is very easy to do with a dial gauge, then turn the engine opposite the direction of rotation. So um, what you're looking to do is, is come back more than whatever this figure is. So I say, like take it back say 400 thousandths of an inch and um, wind it back that way and then slowly wind the engine in the correct direction of rotation until your piston registers what the book says and stop there and then your mark on your pump should line up. So, and things changed over the years with that. So the 192, the, on the, which would be a Mark 165, the mark was 20 degrees before top dead centre or 191 thou down. Um, you know, as the piston's travelling up, it's got 191 thou to get to top dead centre. Now with the A4203, depending on which pump you had on it, um, and look, this manual is not particularly a it's a Perkins manual, it's not a Massey 65 manual. So some of the, um, some of the figures in here won't relate directly to the tractors, but um, an A4203, which is not the direct injection one, it was 16 degrees, 18, and as the engines got later, it got to 20 degrees, which is back to 191 thou before top dead center. Now, the AD4203, now that's our engine and it's a direct injection so we have the, the combustion chamber in the top of the piston. So um, there's no combustion chamber in the head, the injector squirts straight into the bowl into the piston so it's direct injection. So an AD4203 engine, which is what we have in our Mark II, 65, 
And we have an LP55 pump. You can see on the front of the pump there, there's a little LP55 on the injection pump. So if our engine number was prior to engine number 265,000, no, 2651811. So that's 2,651,000. God, they must have made some of these engines, eh? Um, so the early serial numbers, they timed these at 24 degrees before top dead center. So that means that the piston is 269 thou before it reaches top dead center on number one here, and which was um, 6.83 millimeters. Now, we have a very late serial number engine here. So our serial number is 2961855. So we're the late serial number with an LP55 injection pump. So our timing should be set at 26 degrees before top dead centre and 315 thou or 8 millimetres before the piston gets to top dead centre. So... I reckon there's really, um, there's really no better way to check your timing. Um, if you know exactly where that piston is um, coming up, yeah, it has to be a good thing. Now, years ago when I was with John Deere and they had some of the Chamberlain tractors on hauling out, um, they had a, um, a, a 6359 or 6329 John Deere engines. And if we had a bit of a doughy one, we would go out on the job, we drop the valve onto the top of the piston and we do the same thing. 171 thou seems to stick in my head for that, but that may be wrong. But um, so what you can do is you don't have to have the cylinder head off. You can make sure number four valves rocking. So make sure you're, and, and by number four rocking, you know you're firing on number one cylinder. Um, Pop the side off your pump here and make sure you're pretty close to where your mark is, like in our case it's a letter B. And you can drop a valve down onto the piston and the exact same thing works. Don't turn the engine too far, you don't want that valve to pop right down the bottom. But you can sit the valve on top of the piston, bring it down say half an inch before top dead centre and slowly with the dial indicator on the top of the valve slowly bring it back up until you have the figure that you're looking for. So I'll just bring the camera in close. We'll just run through doing it on this. I just want to show you that. And um, if you have the engine at this stage, it's very easy to do. Um, a lot of people put an engine together and put the injection pump on last, but I've gone this way just to show this. And I've got a new cylinder head sitting there and um, there's no need to drop a valve on my engine because I've, I've got it all available. So sit tight. I'll bring the camera in onto the dial gauge here and we'll work out where top dead center is. And um, I've got a digital dial gauge here for the sake of the camera. Now, in all honesty, to have one with a needle would be my preferred thing here. Um, as in, with the, with the digital one, we have to find top dead center, then zero it. And, you know, make sure we're exactly top dead center, then come down. Where with a needle, you can just see where the needle peaks and you know, set that as your zero. So I, I would prefer to do it with a needle dial gauge on this, but for sake of filming, I'll do the hard yards for you, fellas. <laughs> so, so we'll hone in on here, we'll crank this up, and we'll try and show you the process at the very least. But um, what I'll start to do is now, you can see, no, look, I'll, I'll get the camera in and I'll try and just have a, have a scene about that big so you can see the crank turning and you can see the dial gauge. Okay, hopefully you can see the dial gauge here. And what I'm looking to do here is just turn the crank in the direction of rotation and bring it until until it looks like top dead centre. So 
So the number there, where are we? 17. We're looking for the highest number. So it looks like 318 and a half. That's as high as we go. So what I'd like to do is zero that. Okay, we've zeroed that. Now, we'll just see if we can find the zero again. Yep. So we're on the zero, we're on a 0.5 there. I can't seem to get rid of that 0.5. Which can be all about, which can all about be a little bit of flex in the arm here. Okay, so we've set top dead center. We know we have top dead center. We've tested it with the dial gauge. So as a as a piston comes up, the number gets bigger, and then as it starts to come across top dead center and come down again, the number gets smaller. So we've got the highest number that we possibly can. So. Now, I'd like to go in reverse rotation. And look, I'm going to go, well, I'm at 490,000, so half an inch. I'm half an inch down from top dead centre. So what, we, what the idea is now is to come to 315 thousandths of an inch before top dead centre. Now, if we go past that, we have to come back again. We can't just um, we can't just bump it back a little bit because of the wear in the timing gears here. So we have to make sure we're going in the proper direction of rotation so we're allowing for any wear here. And see I've gone too far there, I'm at 305. So I need to come right back. And try and sneak up on 315, well, past it again. So it's pretty, it is pretty touchy. There's 315 there. There you go. Oh, keeps bouncing onto the 16. So look, there's 315 there, I'm pretty sure. So at this stage, I'll bring the camera around and I'll see if we can see if our mark's lining up down in here. So there you go, I, I had to take a photo of my mark here. Now, I turned this engine over yesterday on an angle and I made sure it's lined up. So I haven't been able to have a look at the photo yet, but I think, it's, I, I think it shows you that it's lined up. Now, if it's not lined up, what can you do? Well, if you've already checked where that circlip is, where the flat on the circlip is, so you know your pump's timed right, um, the three bolts that hold the injection pump on here, just loosen them off and turn the pump housing a little bit. So the rotor in the pump will stay put where it is and you turn the pump until it lines up. And then because there is a little bit of backlash there, it certainly doesn't hurt to take it before top dead centre, come up again or hold this gear in direction of rotation. So our pump goes that way, so you know that this gear has to push down, so you can just hold that, hold a little bit of pressure on that gear and make sure that there's no backlash there. So anyway, look, that was just a short little video on checking your pump timing. I think that's the best possible way of doing it. There's other ways of doing it, but um, if you don't have the head and that off and you only have the flywheel off here, well, that's fine, work with that. But if you want to get it exact, I reckon this is the way to go. So there you go. Hopefully that's a handy hip, handy hip, handy tip. And um, 
that'll help you with your rebuild when the time comes.